Hey, Jilly, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. So I am so excited to talk to you about so many different things um, with your cookbook. And then I really want to break down the different aspects of the cookbook. So my first Absolutely. question for you, um, this boss babe can cook book. So I want to know one, where did you come up with the name for this? And then also what is you, how do you define boss babe? Okay, so I came up with the name because as I was thinking for something to come up with, I my biggest thing with this cookbook was just saying staying so true and authentic to myself. I am 24 years old. Um, it's not like I'm 70 with eight kids and been married for 40 years. I didn't want it to be like, you know, that type of cookbook. I wanted it to be very useful, very organic to my brand and who Jilly is. And, you know, I wanted it to be fashion for it, all about food, all about family, all about faith and fun and fitness. Yep. And so um, I just kind of was thinking, I was like, what can I name it that, you know, once you hear about it, you're like, you know, what? it makes sense. It makes sense why she named it that. And as I was really going through names with my mom, we were kind of like, shoveling ideas back and forth. And we kept saying like boss, like boss, because you know, I'm a boss. So I was like, <laughs> I want it to be not only penetrated towards me, I want when I'm talking about myself, I want somebody to read it and say, this boss babe can cook. They're talking about themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the okay. name came up with this boss babe, because I wanted it to be, you know, very sexy and fun. So instead of saying this boss girl or this boss chick, I was like, how can I do a plan tangent? So it just was this boss babe can cookbook. And there it was. I love it. So you brought up your six F. So it's faith, family, food, fitness, fashion, and fun. So I love yeah. that because it's, like you said, it really ties into you. So I have a question for each of those Fs that's related to the cookbook, but then also not at the same time. Um, so the first one I absolutely love because it's faith. So when is a time that you really stepped out on faith and trusted God? And how did that work out for you? And also how scary was it to do it when you did it? You know, I feel each and every day I'm stepping out on a new um, leap of faith. I feel like my journey isn't on a piece of paper. My, my, I don't have a rule book for my career. I don't have a rule book for my brand and for who I am. So each and every day I start off my morning, no joke with prayer. Um, not only with my boyfriend, but then once I get up my family, we have a group chat, uh, group chat. And my dad always is the head of it. He sends the prayer. So each and every morning I start my morning off with a double prayer and, you know, um, not going to go like too religious here, but I just feel like God is such an important part of my life. It has always been. And I just know that nothing is possible without him. So honestly, with knowing that when shit goes wrong, I know that as long as it's in God's plan, because I think the funniest thing, the quote that's always stuck with me is tell God your plans and he's going to really laugh. And so I've learned that and I've learned to really understand that because once again, just to play back on, you know, being 24, I didn't expect to come out with a cookbook this year. I did not. I did not at all. And, you know, that was just something that happened over quarantine and with God's like structure, it just, it came into fruition and it really happened. So faith just plays a really big part of my life besides the cookbook. It just plays, it's why my family's so co close. Um, you know, God comes first and family's right after it. So I think that's just the number one thing with everything I do, everything. I love that too, because I, uh, people get uncomfortable if you make it like if you talk too much about God, but my whole story mm -hmm. is the same way. So that's why when I saw that, I was like, no, yeah, right. yeah. So it's like, I I've had like the craziest stories. So I love that, um, that you brought the quote about how, if you tell God your plans, he'll laugh. So did you have yeah. a time in your life where you tried to plan something and then it ended up not working out and then something else completely different happened you're like oh shit it really was better like just going with God Every, now I'm going to stop yes <laughs> literally all the time literally I think my life is still a uh, progress of that because no matter what I'm a very like headstrong woman I'm very independent so I I need a schedule I need a routine I need to know you know what's going on and so that's just who I am so sometimes of course now I've learned that that's not always going to happen so just naturally I still try to like you know have a plan and with things but you know sometimes God is just like let go let God and just trust just believe love that and then you said that so you you do double prayer so uh, with yourself and your boyfriend and then also your family how long has that been part of your day-to-day -day routine forever especially with my family um we've always done it we've always I literally could show you our group chat I don't even know where the beginning is I I have no idea 
um, we just always done it. My dad started, I think the actual group prayer years ago, but he has this book and he gets one every single like January 1st, the top of the year, he gets a new one. And it's a book of prayers and it literally has a date at the top. So it'll say April 2nd, 2020. And like, there's a prayer for that day. He copies it and pastes it and sends it. And it's just crazy how relevant it is, even though it's pre-written. It's so relevant to each day, which is a little bit kind of scary, but it's just so relevant. I feel like that's just another version of just when God needs to talk to you, he's going to talk to you in any form. So um, with my parents and my brother, it's been years. And then um, with my relationship, it was just one of those things where it happened so early on. We started praying, you know, before we ate and just we realized how big God was in both of our lives, not just mine, not just his. And I think that's like, you know, what really bonded us. And now it's just every single morning, um, once we wake up, he does it every single night, I do it. So it's just like, it's fluent now. It's just, it's the norm. That's amazing because people don't realize like you, and I'm sure you, you've experienced it as well. It's like, we get ourselves into relationships, but when you're a God-fearing person, if that person ha- does not have that relationship with God, even if you try to like, it doesn't work. So that's amazing to hear that you and your boyfriend have that. You preaching right now. You preaching. <laughs> so like, oh, I learned that that's part of the God's plan thing that it was like, no, that is not it. And then it works out better. So I love it. I love Absolutely. Something that's part of your foundation. So the second F family, um, so I know that you have generational recipes, but you also have a recipe for each member of your family. So I'm sure there's a lot in there, but is there someone specifically, I would love to hear why a recipe or a specific food is associated with one of your family members. And if there's like a a, a fun backstory behind it. Absolutely. Okay. So for this one, let me actually go to the page. Um, My Gammy's gumbo. So we call our grouchy Gammy. Um, (laughs) And every year for Thanksgiving Eve and Christmas Eve, um, we make the annual gumbo and my gammy has been making it all these years. I'm 24. So she started making it um, really 19 December, um, 1995. Like they really started making it. I was born in 1996 because I was supposed to be a December baby. Long story short, I came out late. So, um, my mom and my grandmother were the main ones in the kitchen. My dad is in the kitchen too, but with the gumbo, it was like always my grandmother and my mom being like, you know, her sous chef. And um, Christmas Eve and Thanksgiving Eve for 24 years, we have just been doing it. It's like our, it's our annual thing. It's what we do. And um, it's just brought so much joy into our families. I kid you not. I don't know if you've seen my Instagram, but our Thanksgiving Eve and our Christmas Eve parties have like, usually I swear it's like 150, 200 people at our house, all there for Gammy's Gumbo, literally all there. So I think with that specific food and that specific recipe, it has so many memories, which is why it's my favorite. It's not just the food. It's what her food brought. Everyone was like, would text me the day before Thanksgiving Eve and be like, is Gammy doing her gumbo? You know, so it was just something that everyone looked forward to. Everyone knew. And so this yeah. page in my book, it's um, us. And then I made it even more special. I have my grandmother's handwritten recipe. So, you know, oh. older folks, they don't really, yeah, they don't email. I was like, okay, she's not going to type it out to me. So how can I do it? And whenever she wrote it down, I was like, you know what? I'll just type it. But then I was looking at it and I was just like, you know, how cool would it be if I actually just put literally her handwritten recipe in my book? And that just made it even more authentic. And so I think this is definitely hands down one of my favorites just because you know family I mean I included my dad my brother just everybody in this book and I just think family is such such an important part of my life I mean I wouldn't be here without them literally and I just think they're so supportive in everything I do and we're just so damn close like we are so close I'm just so grateful for my family so family is a real important part of your girl's life that's amazing so the third f is food so obviously you have a whole cookbook, but I want to know what is your favorite food that is not in the cookbook? And then oh. what food you will absolutely not eat. Okay, I'm Southern. I am a Creole Southern girl. So I love, oh, I love seafood first and foremost. I love going to places like, well, I guess that is kind of in my book. Okay, hold on. Let me do one that's really not in my book because I forgot I do have a crab boil in there. Um, you know what I love? I love pizza. I love, oh my God. I love um, thin crust with um, pepperoni, sausage, and jalapenos. (laughs) 
No, it is. It's amazing. It's amazing. I can't forget my crushed red pepper. Is there a specific place you have? You said pizza. Um, no, uh, just places where I go, but, um, you said there's a specific place that I haven't had it. No, that you have to have the, your specific, like your favorite pizza spot. Um, no, actually it doesn't matter. I mean, deep dish, you can never go wrong too, but that's like so much bread and that's just, I feel so bad after I eat it, but not necessarily. Now in your next cookbook, you have to have like a Jillian's pizza. I know, right? <laughs> like a, a section for like homemade pizza and stuff. I might have to do that. Definitely make a Creole twist of like homemade pizzas. And then what about a food you absolutely will not eat or a food that you hate? Um, I'm a foodie, so I don't think there's nothing that I've just said like ill to, but I'm allergic to um, oil pecans. So something that has like walnuts and pecans, I kind of stay away from. It's hard because I love like pecans, but especially if it has walnuts, I for sure can't eat it. But I guess what I'll stay away from, probably just that. Got it. Um, the next one, fitness. So you, you obviously have a fitness routine. So I would love to hear your fitness routine and what advice you have for those who you know, especially during quarantine, everyone wanted to get into fitness. and then Absolutely, yeah. Watch Netflix. So what's your advice to like stay on that routine and stay motivated? You know, just getting up and knocking it out the way. I mean, I think just staying healthy is like a big, important part of my life. And I know I like to, I like to look good. I like to look good all year round. You know, I think that's just the biggest motivation is just I don't want to slack off, especially you no know, quarantine 15 over here. So, I mean, just <laughs> getting up every day, having just that a natural motivation. I think the number one motivation is just myself and just making sure, you know, that stays in tune. Um, but I mean, shit, we all have our days. I don't want to work out every single day, but like, there's those days where I specifically feel like, okay, like, let me get, let me get on it. You know, it's been a few days too long. Let me get back on it. Let me get back in the groove. Even if it's stuff like, you know, um, sauna and steam room and things like that, um, that are just like key components to my life. So just really just getting in the routine of it, just making it more natural than versus like having to do it, you know, make it part of your lifestyle. And that's real, like actually making it a part of your lifestyle. <laughs> Got it. Um, the next one, fashion. So what made you want to incorporate fashion and making this a lookbook that's why I think that the, the cookbook isn't your yes like yeah said, what made you want to um tie in fashion you know it just plays back again to who Jilly is I think if I would have just done a cookbook with no pictures and a whole bunch of recipes it would have just been so damn boring it would have just been not even out there it would have it wouldn't even match me it would have looked like I just slapped my face on the cover and I just put my name on something and so that's what I didn't want to happen I wanted it to be so true to me and I mean every time you know you see like through my pictures I love fashion I love fashion for it I love styling I love clothes I love you know looking good it all play it all goes hand in hand with everything um so I was just like the I think that was the one of not the easiest but the most authentic part of the cookbook I was like okay this is where the the real fun comes into hand you know just having um there's never been a cookbook slash lookbook done and I think for every single recipe, I was just like, that's going to be where I stand different. I'm going to have a different look for every single recipe. And, you know, of course, when I first said that idea, um, my stylist and people thought I was kind of crazy because it was like 45 different looks. But, hey, we did it. And it literally turned out so phenomenal. Yeah, no, it turned out really, really great. So the last F and then we're almost done is fun. So we know what you enjoy doing just based off your six Fs, but what is a hobby that you enjoy doing for fun that is not? Oh, that's a good idea. Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I would just say like probably brunching with my boyfriend. I mean, that's probably the <laughs> fun thing that we do, right? Um, other than that, I mean... I don't really, I, I know that sounds crazy. Dang, am I boring? Um, <laughs> I mean, we learned a lot from the six Fs anyway. I'm like, let me. Yeah, see. okay, okay. I'm like, let's see if there's something that she didn't include. So, I mean, brunch wasn't in there. Yeah, you know, like brunch like that. And then, of course, happy hour with my girlfriends. Um, just spending time with my best friends. Always going to the spa. That's always fun. And just, you know, stuff like that. I'm very, I don't do the whole, like, club scenes and stuff. So, I think 
just anything that's like, you know, brunching with my loved ones, happy hour with my girls. That's my type of fun. That's like what I like to do. And then, of course, binge watching Netflix shows that are really good. So if you have any suggestions on what I should watch, give me some. Oh, okay. It's not on <laughs> It's on HBO Max. But have you watched The Undoing with Nicole Kidman? Oh, I just finished it. I, I just finished it, yes. it on, su- was it Sunday? No, I finished it Saturday night, but I finished it in two days because I'm like, I need to know. I need to, were you right about who it was? Just in case anyone's no. watching this. And I was um, oh. wrong. <laughs> Look, I was about to say who it was. So if someone's watching this, I won't say who it is. But no, I actually wasn't right. Um, I was not right. Um, you leaving? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, I thought, you know, the thing with the show is it was so good at just making you think it was someone, but then making you think it would be this person, but then making you think it was this person. And at one point I thought it was the kid. Me too. So I, um, when I watched it by the end of the second episode, when the husband showed up, I'm like, there's no way he did it. And then I thought Nicole Kidman did it because I'm like, she is a therapist and she is smart. So maybe she knew the whole time. Yes. And I was like, and then she said, if you ever need to talk. So then I, and then when I thought it was the kid, I'm like, Oh, that would be crazy. No, the, the whole show, it proves it's like, you really don't know. Like, no, but you know, what was really awful. It was I think the worst part of the show was at the end when we found out who it was and the fact that he tried to blame his kid. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh yeah, he's, he's psycho. He is psycho. His sarcasm so funny. Like the kid's sarcasm <laughs> yes. was great. Like when, he, when Nicole Kidman was like, oh, you scared me. He's like, I said, mom. Like, like I was yeah. <laughs> Right. No, that no, was I a love great it. show. It was a great, I'm sad that it's over, but I know there's a season two. So I've been recommending that to everybody. And you know what? Real quick, Big Little Lies. I started that. That's oh, really good. Big Little Lies is amazing. I finished that. And then also- I'm on uh, season two. Yes, that's an amazing show. And actually, I think it, when I watched that because of Nicole Kidman, obviously I, I was aware of Nicole Kidman, but I really became- Yeah. After Big Little Lies. Then I watched The Undoing. Um, then she has an old movie on Hulu called Before I Go to Sleep. That's a fucked up movie, so you should watch that for sure. Really? Before I go to sleep? Yeah, it's on Hulu. Okay. So it's I won't ruin it, but pretty much the plot is she loses her memory every time she goes to sleep. And then she, yeah. <laughs> it's I'd be doped up on Red Bull and coffee. I'm not going to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> but you have to watch that and let me know what you think of it because that one's really okay. Funny. Um, but yeah, those are really, really good. So see, you do a lot of stuff outside of cooking and all the six. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Perfect. My last question. So, um, it's obvious that, you know, you follow your dreams. So I want to ask you, what is your, if someone were to ask you, what is your recipe to following your dreams? You know, I think the best advice that I can give anybody following, following their dreams is just never looking back, you know, um, there's a path that you can follow and then there's a path that you can make. And I think I actually have a tattoo right here that says, go where the path may not lead, go instead where there's no path and leave a trail. And I think that's a very, very important component to my life. I mean, if that, if I'm going towards where the tra- uh, the trail is already done, I mean, that rule book is already set in stone. We know where that's going to play out. But if I go in a different path and, you know, create my own trail and my own steps, I think, you know, the possibilities are endless. I think there's no looking back when you just focus on yourself, when you focus on your dreams. And I know that my trail is going to the top. So I'm just building it. I'm doing my own rules and, you know, just keeping God first, keeping my faith strong and just knowing that no matter what, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I think just doing something every single day. If you're working every single day, there's no way that your dreams and, you know, your your progress isn't going to keep going up. So I think as long as you're following your dreams and doing something every single day to get to it, it's bound to happen. Amen. That was the perfect ending for this. Julia, thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to explain everything with the cookbook. I'm excited to see what, what God has next for you since you're only 24. Like there's so much more to come and I'm really excited for you. So thank you so much for like all the motivation and the inspiration. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.